Your hobnail boots clatter on the cobblestones as you move with haste through the foggy back streets of London. You make it to a door. You descend into the bowels of the earth. As you do, chanting gets louder and louder. Every step further down this staircase brings you closer to some kind of unknowable evil. You make it to a stone slab of a door that's slightly ajar. And as the chanting begins to hit its crescendo, you fear you're too late. You burst inside, and it's as you feared. The cult, they have her. Your wife Fanny, tied to the table. The high priest of Wismanoz, holding a serrated blade above her. You draw your gun. The knife plunges down. A shot rings out. Have you ended this dark ritual? Or are you on a mystery quest? Welcome everybody to Mystery Quest. Today we're playing Mothership, The Haunting of Ypsilon 14. This is a spooky sci-fi horror game along the lines of Alien or Event Horizon. As always, this channel is generously funded by members. And as a little bonus this time, we recorded our character creation. Um, it was an absolute mess, but if you want to see some of the behind the scenes, um, consider signing up. I hope you enjoy. Uh, welcome, everybody, to Mystery Quest. Uh, today we are playing a spooky horror game. Ooh. A spooky sci-fi horror game called Mothership. And the scenario is called the Haunting of Ypsilon 14. It's, you guys are on a totally normal space mission. Everything's fine. I don't know why I even described it as horror. It's going to be <laughs> no. absolutely... Wait, what? You're going to be loading and unloading cargo. Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh. Oh. Mundane, if anything. Absolutely, absolutely relaxed. Uh, I'm joined by a host of guests, but we will introduce them as they begin to arise. Uh, we're in the, the dark interior of a spaceship. A single computer monitor flickers to life. It's an old CRT kind of monitor. Lines of code begin to run across the screen, saying, nearing destination, disabling cryosleep. Uh, can I get uh, the three of you to each make me a body save? Oh, uh, I failed mine. Okay, that's fine. Uh, um, also, one thing that is very important in this game, whenever you make a dice roll, mm -hmm. please say the number that you rolled. Because... I rolled 99, Tom. <laughs> oh, God, okay. <laughs> That's a double. That is a, <laughs> is a double. That is a, a 99 is always a critical fail. So uh, Mothership is a D100 based system where people will have skills that they are trying to roll under with a D100. Uh, doubles are criticals, <laughs> and uh, 99 is always a critical fail. That's super bad. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, you have all failed your body saves. Mm. Ouch. Um, we'll begin, well, first of all, first of all with you. You have the lowest. You're the closest to, to it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the gentle hiss as the chamber on your, your cryo sleep, sleep casket begins to open mm -hmm. and you groggily are becoming aware. You've been asleep for maybe about two weeks mm -hmm. and you get up. Uh, who are you and who are you playing? Uh, my name is Lydia and I am playing the role of Carol today. If you want to picture her, she's got long blonde, like beautiful bouncy curly hair, big fake nails, <laughs> like fake extension like eyelash extensions lots of makeup she has a heavy duty work her clothing which is like bubblegum pink um <laughs> so very like put together very like into her fashion she actually uh pilots the ship nice. um she got into it because an ex-boyfriend uh used to be into like drag racing and she kind of picked it up from him so it's called, right? Yeah. Space yeah. drag racing. Space, yeah, sorry, no, space, I love that. space yeah, yeah. drag racing. Um, she, uh, so yeah, she took this job because she wanted to make some money because looking this fabulous is not cheap. Okay, so Carol, you're only doing this for a paycheck. This mm -hmm. is just a job at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the 
a third, fourth time you've done this run, yep. and you know if anything goes wrong, your pay will be docked, and you just do not want that. You do not want to be wasting your life with this. You're saving up your money for your hopes and dreams so you can retire to wherever, go on holiday. Space Bahamas. Space Bahamas. Yeah, okay. And so uh, you need to make sure that this mission just is completed. Okay. You're going in, you need to make a delivery, you got to pick up some stuff, and then head on out. That's okay. That's your number one job. Uh, just make sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Okay, okay. I just care about getting my paycheck, get my nails done, going on holiday. Yeah. Cool. Cool. You, uh, yeah, you have woken, woken up, and you do not feel good. No. Uh, these aren't the most expensive kind of cryopods. And there's always going to be some side effects, but oh, you're feeling pretty rough. Mm -hmm. Not super happy. Um, as you look around, you're the first to kind of get out of your stasis pod. And in the doorway, you just see a figure just coming at you. Roll me a fear check. Hmm. 22. Uh, and my fear is 37. Oh my God. Ooh. Oh, it's not, it's not that scary. It's the ship's android. <laughs> Welcome back, Captain. I hope you had a pleasant sleep. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, our beloved android? In case you have forgotten, my name is Stephen. I am the ship's android. The ship time is 11.41. You have been in cryosleep for two weeks. We have nearly reached our destination. You are right, Stephen. How you doing, darling? <laughs> it is wonderful to see you, Carol. Lovely to see you too, babe. Give me a kiss. I... I'm. I'm not. Sh I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Lewis Brindley of the Oscast. Um, can you describe what Stephen looks like? Uh, can you tell us? Just give us a out of character description of um, Stephen. Sort of looks human like. Mm -hmm. Stephen was designed as a lifelike android mm -hmm. by the the TCH Corp, and he was originally stationed on a theme park. So he's got lifelike areas, but he was repurposed when the theme park shut down as a ship's android corporation property. I do the logistics. I keep track of the ship. I assist in general maintenance mm -hmm. aboard. It's company policy to have one ship's android on each corporation vessel. Okay. I love that. And uh, yeah, you have approached, you've seen everyone is coming to. Carol. You may. You ought to have a shower. You are covered in cryo goop. <laughs> oh, cryo goop! Oh, I didn't realize it was that kind of cryo. Also, you should put some clothes on. Oh my god! <laughs> the men will be waking up shortly. All right, love. Oh, god, I feel like I've had like twelve Malibus last night. I feel rough. <laughs> no, no, space Malibus. <laughs> twelve space Malibus. All right, darling, let's go have a shower. That's right? right. You did consume twelve space Malibus <laughs> two weeks ago. You may have forgotten. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh no, never cryo uh, sleep on a hangover. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, next up is the next pod that mm. hisses open and you have just the worst headache. Uh, oh. Who are you and who are you playing? I am Ben and I am playing Jake Hacksaw, ex-colonial marine and all over badass. Wow. That's not his real name, you might be surprised to learn. What? <laughs> <laughs> he actually uh, served very briefly in the Colonial Marines before defecting when being forced to put down like a workers' riot. Oh, God. Uh, it was his first mission straight out of boot camp, and he immediately thought, this isn't the life for me, I don't want to get into a gunfight, and just, just got out of there, took all his kit and went on the run on the colony, mm -hmm. and now fights as a soldier of fortune Ooh. under the... Under the you know, the much more cool name, Jake Hacksaw. Love that. So he pretends to be this grizzled veteran of special forces, but actually he's kind of a vague coward who's fresh out of boot camp. I love, love him. But to back him up, he's got his sort of exosuit battle armor, his general purpose machine gun. Welcome back, Corporal. I have prepared your accoutrement here on this table. Everything has been polished. I have had a lot of time during the last two weeks and it is all very shiny. <laughs> Oorah! Thanks, bot! Uh, you say that while vomiting. <laughs> uh, like, the, the cryosickness has really gotten the worst of you. 
Uh, no. Not so good. So ain't like a day on the farm. Uh, <laughs> it's the reverse man. <laughs> Try to smoke your cigar, <laughs> vomit on it. Oh, it's like the farm. Oh, yeah, we all got dysentery. Oh. <laughs> uh, all of a sudden, uh, sirens go off. There is a red flashing. Mm -hmm. um, another of the cryopods you can see is beginning to just flood with water. It is Ooh. not. It is not opened, and you can see. Uh, the fourth member of your crew in this stasis pod um, and their uh, health signals what is that called? Life signs their life signs Flatline. are beginning to flash and they are oh, flatlining and this thing is filling with uh, just disgusting cryo. Oh my god, are they like banging on the window trying oh. to get out? Yeah, they are. They am. They am. <laughs> is banging on the window trying to get out. And wh what are you guys going to do? This is not how I thought this was going to begin. But... <laughs> Let me out! <laughs> yeah, it, immediately the three of oh, you are. Ah, I, I grab the, whatever's on the table and try to like smash the, the Tell window. me what is on that table. What are you my, grabbing? I don't know. My accoutrements that you've finished polishing. <laughs> what were they? I have all of your stuff in your equipment loadout. Oh, your... wow. My my general purpose machine gun. <laughs> Apparently. And power armor. <laughs> That's your thing, right? Those are my things. I will go and fiddle with the control panels because I've see, I would have been the first to see this happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. Give me um, some kind of dice roll. What do you have? Computers. You've got computers. I okay. have got computers. Uh, right, I want you to. The roll computers me. have jammed. I will try and override there manually. Is, yeah, I need a manual override. Eighty-nine. <laughs> okay, so in That's, this game, you will have a skill. So you would have. I have um, fifty-five intellect with plus ten for computers, which gives me a skill of sixty-five. However, okay. I rolled an eighty-nine, which is a fail. Cool. You have failed that, and this is very stressful. Um, <laughs> Get me out of here! Right, our fourth member of the crew. This computer uh, is not You are going to take five points of damage. This is going desperately wrong for you. Okay, uh, oh, no. uh, okay. Mm. like you can see, uh, life signs getting weaker. Mm. I'm going to uh, shout at the robot and say, "Get him out of there! God damn it!" I am trying. Something on the table. <laughs> I am trying, Corporal, but the computer is not responding. Uh, yeah, computer uh, looking everyone, bad. Everyone, move out my way, right? I've got a drill. I've got a drill and I'm very good at industrial equipment. Okay, great. At least I can put a hole in it so a poor boy can breathe. I love this. All right. Uh, right, can you Smart. make me... What do you want to be doing this with? You can choose the stat that you're uh, using. So on the top of your sheet, you will have four main stats. Okay, um, yeah. Strength, speed, combat, and intelligence. I guess it would be strength. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is um, there a skill bonus that might apply to this situation? Is I've this... got industrial equipment. So you can add that onto your strength. And because you're actually using a drill, um, so there's a mechanic in this called advantage, where mm -hmm. if you have an advantage on a roll, you can roll twice and choose the better roll. And Ooh. I think because you're skilled at this and you have a very appropriate tool for this job, mm. uh, yeah, so roll twice and take the best. Uh, 56 and... 76. Okay, what is your strength plus your... Oh, it's only 49. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Is that just your strength is 49? Strength is 39 plus my industrial equipment is 49. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, okay, you can take two more points of damage. <laughs> oh, man. That was five and then two. Yeah. Um, all of the players will have health bars. Right. And... Uh, just stress. fill in hmm? dots. Oh, shit, I gain a yeah. stress. What's our starting oh, stress? Yeah, everyone starts out with an amount of stress. You start out with two stress by basic. Mm -hmm. um, and the players are going to be getting more stressed as mm -hmm. time goes by, which might eventually lead them to break. If you ever fail a dice roll, you take one stress. So, okay, so now I've got three. Uh, Steven Thank the robot and Do I get stress from Carol? Vomiting? Android. Android. Um, yeah, in fact, everyone who failed their body saves will also oh receive God. stress from their cryo. Uh, Not as stressed as he problems. is, though. Old no. uh, drowning in his own space goop. Okay, uh, this is getting very dangerous. You now know he is definitely not able to breathe. Mm. Um, is in super danger. Oh. This is a problem I can't solve with a machine gun, so I'm just going to shout at everyone to try harder. Yeah, okay. Could you not could you not try gonna, firing at it with your gun? I'm going to do some kind of leadership-based encouragement of 
like give the do do, do a better ninety four. <laughs> <laughs> An inspiring speech. Okay, everyone is panicking. For fuck's sake, you idiot! Everyone is panicking. Oh, Sirens are going off. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Our doctor is beginning to... So we all take another stress as well, right? <laughs> that is... Uh, well, uh, ah, ah. Colonel Haxall is definitely stressed. I'm, uh, I've got an expert skill in mechanical repair. I could try and fix his uh, chamber, whatever's going on with it. Great, yeah. Give me give me yeah. that dice roll. Um, right. I might need you to be doing this on maybe even speed or your... Nidia, what you're on? Intelligence. <laughs> uh, so my intelligence is 43, uh, plus 15 because it's an expert. Nice. Uh, I rolled a 70. <laughs> Well, this is a very... Uh, <laughs> well, I don't think I need to put spooky monsters into this game. I think I could just let you guys slowly go mad trying to use a oh computer. God. Okay, I'm going to guess which pipes pump the fluid in and just, like, yank them out. So that hopefully that will then drain the fluid out of the tube. Okay. Uh, I, want, I want, like, an intelligence um, or mechanical repair or something. Um uh, 23! Woo! Great, yeah, yeah, 100%. You have found the correct pipes, and you can you can drag those out, um, ripping them, ripping them free. He's still stuck in the chamber, but it's slowly beginning to drain. Uh, the screen of it kind of cracked a little bit from all the drilling attempts. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Robotnik over here. Be oh, there is an the emergency side. release handle here. <laughs> 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 It wasn't in the manual. <laughs> uh, and you... Well, is there one? 76. <laughs> no, not one. You're looking around. You <laughs> This emergency release saying is for that empty cryo pod. Oh, no. <laughs> Look, I will give... Uh, Simon, you can have one action and you're... And you're done. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Yes. Like, the situation right. isn't going to get worse, but you are still in peril at the moment. Right. Now, how how would I... Because I don't have anything. I just have myself, You're my knowledge of body. chemistry, mm. and my intellect. Uh, how are you going to think yourself out of this mm. one, man? Yeah, like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, is that like an, an emergency anything inside? Like, how would you... Sure. Make me an intellect roll, then, okay. to see if you can find something from the inside. Intellect. I mean, that's not going to be... It's, yeah, literally just intellect. 40. And I have 42. Ooh. Great. Tell me. Tell me how you're solving solving this riddle. There's an emergency release handle on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> just ignored it the whole time. I just, I just put my hands forward and push, and it opens from the inside. Wow, you used all of your smarts. Yeah, apparently, yeah, I, I've been pulling it. Oh, <laughs> 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 he was very oh confused from his life oh. sleep. It was okay. oh. you, unbelievable. And we're all like, oh, <laughs> oh you idiot, you were holding it closed. <laughs> you, you were holding it closed the whole time. <laughs> You okay. panic, just yanking on the handle. Uh, you oh managed to flop, soaking wet, covered in cryogu, onto the floor. Uh, you are feeling absolutely worse for wear. Uh, who are you, and would you like to Welcome introduce back, your character? Welcome back, Doctor. I hope you had a pleasant sleep. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh this is terrible. Again. I almost died in there. Why didn't you open the thing? The computer wasn't responding. But aren't you a computer? Surely you... I am not able to directly interface with this old technology. I thought you had a thing where you, like, you move your finger and there's, like, a hole, and then you push it in. You am weren't supposed to know about that. Oh. <laughs> It's not on his finger. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so Hello. Uh, Simon Lane of the I am Yogscast. Simon Lane in Yogscast. I am playing Dr. Thrax. Mm -hmm. I am a scientist man. My speciality is a pathology. I research various diseases. I am a company man. Have been for a few years. Yes. All uh, ship's vessels are mandated to have a medic on board. Well, I mean... Um, you have um, served the role admirably. I'm not really a medic. You only have. I three don't really know medicine. Reprimands. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I mean, I like to drink. 
That's I okay. Say? Space beer. Space, Space beer. beer. Love it. Space Miller Light. <laughs> <laughs> you currently owe 60,000 credits. Wow. That's a lot. Um, we never actually rolled your guys' uh, money, money no. at the very bottom. You don't get a lot. Uh, but is 60,000 credits too much, Tom? <laughs> 60,000 credits is a lot. I, I thought that was like not much. <laughs> so I think you roll uh, 2d10 and times that by 10. Seven. And that's how much space credits yeah, you have. 100 credits. So 60,000 is a pretty big bar tab. <laughs> yeah. 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 What are you? Uh, three, 30. 30. I've got 30 quid. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> them nails ain't cheap. Time yeah, oh my god. Hi, mate. Times ten. You only rolled three. Three, three times <laughs> yeah. ten. Oh, wow, Lydia, you're broke. Uh, why, when I need a low, I get a high, and when I need a high, I get a low? Sad. It's the curse. It's the way of the day. Right. I'm broke ass. So you've managed to get yourselves cleaned up, and you are now sort of sat in the the crew quarters of your vessel. Um, mm -hmm. This ship that you're on is called the Tempest. Um, it is a sort of like middle-sized haulage vessel, um, and you are currently on a five and a half month round trip. Um, you go sort of outer rim uh, from station to station where you will make drop-offs and you'll pick up uh, pick up materials that are produced there. Mm -hmm. um, this is your last stop um, of the the journey, and then it's off for a, a pleasant two weeks of R and R before mm. the next voyage begins again. Um, absolutely routine, completely normal. A bunch of you have been doing this uh, for for years mm -hmm. and having a absolutely great time. Um, your last stop that you're heading to is the station, the mining station uh, called Ypsilon 14. Mm -hmm. um, it's an asteroid which is super, super outer rim. And you are here to drop off some fresh supplies, uh, some posts, some deliveries, uh, some delicious foods and snacks and you need to pick up whatever they're mining here um, mm -hmm. it's some kind of weird metals alien metal uh, great great stuff uh, so yeah you're here to pick up um, a bunch of stuff that they've been mining um, this mm -hmm. will take a little while to load up and you need to meet up with a guy here called Mikael Mike Michelson what a name <laughs> and uh, Mike for short uh, you've definitely met him before mm -hmm. uh, if you've been on the <laughs> ship in the past and he's basically the guy who stamps the end of the manifest that you can hand into the company and then boom you're out of here mm -hmm. uh, you have jumped out of FDL you're about an hour's distance away from uh, Ypsilon 14 itself mm -hmm. and so you have just like a tiny bit of time to Get yourself ready, um, have a drink, kind of nurse. It all, anyone who has failed their their body saves, it feels like you've got a bit of a hangover. Mm -hmm. Like you just feel a bit gross. Um, mm -hmm. It won't last too long because you weren't in cryo for, for very long at all. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to do before your last mm -hmm. approach to... Is there a way to restore some health? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think on the ship you'll definitely have, like it's <clears throat> uh, like a pretty industrial vessel that you are flying. Um, it is pretty pretty bare bones for actual facilities um, as it's designed that most of the time you are going to be in cryostasis. Um, but there is a little, uh, like a crew quarters. Each of you will have a bunk there. Um, there will be a sort of ready enough uh, med bay, um, but honestly not that much fancier than a sort of medicine cabinet in a toilet. Uh, is not super over the top right um although this thing is quite utilitarian it's been used for years and the walls are covered in posters um and stickers there's some mismatched furniture that's been dragged in here like it looks a little bit like a jumble sale mm -hmm. um fairy lights <clears throat> up around the place oh, uh cute. you know curtains and wall hangings mm -hmm. um in the actual cockpit itself a whole host of fuzzy dice and ornaments <laughs> and trinkets uh hanging there there's a beer fridge that's been put in next to the driver's seat. Like it is, this, this thing has been lived in mm -hmm. and, um, you know, has been converted to be as comfortable as possible by the myriad of crew that have slowly turned over mm -hmm. uh, using it. Everyone has like added something in. Imagine a bit like a permanent student house. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's not the nicest place in the world, but it kind of feels a but bit like home, home now. Right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, you can definitely go to uh, the medical, medical area and okay 
I take some space paracetamol. Space paracetamol, that definitely helps. Um, I will say in the med bay, there is. I'm going to say there is a like a stim pack, which is used for emergencies in right. the in the med bay. But um, just one. There's only one. Um, you can do like a, just a basic patch up job of yourself, right? Uh, if you want to, um, doctor. Can, I see you have sustained injury during cryo sleep. I am programmed to perform basic remedy and basic first aid. Let me assist you in recovery. Okay, could you put holds up the stim pack? <laughs> okay, well, um, either you can use the stim pack, which is quite a heavy duty healing item, right? Um, or the uh, the combined powers of Stephen the Android and yourself as a doctor, you can mm -hmm. patch yourself back up. If you want to okay. give me a intelligence roll with, if you have any kind of medicine, and I'll give you advantage because you're you've got help from the robot. Yeah, the uh, tell me where it hurts. Does it hurt? <laughs> you kiss he it better. Points to his lips. Okay. So, right. I guess so you, I got chemistry. I have now kissed mm. two members of the team. <laughs> wow. Well, just speed running. <laughs> How many people can you Romance kiss? Romance the whole party while you're at it. <laughs> so if we have some, you know, space paracetamol, some space aspirin, some you vitamin make a, C. Okay, you want to make, make a, a cocktail. A, like a gonzo yeah. cocktail. Like an Aperol spritz. So yeah. Yeah. But... Sure. Okay. Yeah. Give me a give me a dice <laughs> roll. Like a Baraka Baraka yes. spritz. <laughs> okay. I'd love it if they served okay. that in space what have I got? <laughs> I've got fifty-two. Then okay. So I need under fifty-two. Uh, with the the androids' help, you can you can have an advantage on this. Oh, thank you. So I can roll it twice. Fifty. Right. Nice. No, cool. Five. Uh, five. 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 Uh, I'll say roll it again, just in case you roll a double, and you might get a critical success. Or a critical fact. No, no, no I'll let, um, because you're choosing the best thing. So that 32. Okay, so great. Five. Uh, I'll give you half of a thing. You can get four hit points back. Four, okay, right. How is the boo-boo feeling now, sir? I feel much better. Thank you very much, Ken. It's very good of you. You've done a good job. I must now update the captain on the ship's status. Uh, ah. TCH Tempest performing admirably, captain. Shields and maneuvering thrusters are all working at 88% efficiency. Minor asteroid damage sustained during <laughs> transit. Oh, God. Other than that, we are on time, on course, for Ypsilon 14. Would you like me to disengage the autopilot so you can have a go? Yes, please, darling. <laughs> Thank you. Autopilot's now disengaged. So... Uh you are getting closer to your destination. You are pulling up uh, towards the coordinates that you've been given. And slowly, through just the, the darkness of space, there is a patch of blacker, blacker blackness that gets larger and larger and larger until it is just consuming the entirety of the uh, cockpit window. And this is the asteroid Y14. It must be several kilometers across okay so it like blocks and out all the stars and everything yeah it and it's blocks just... out all the stars because it's not <clears throat> picking up any so is there a star behind it sure. from where we are right yeah. so is this the dark side of the asteroid yeah but this is not in <clears throat> any particular system this is just in space this asteroid it's just a rogue on. asteroid floating right. through space. rogue asteroid okay is that okay sure <laughs> this is my space world <laughs> okay. and this is totally normal it sounds perfectly viable yes does this work? I know you did astrophysics. If I'd actually got my degree in astrophysics, I'd go, actually, but I'm like, sure. Sounds good. Oh, yeah, because I am as qualified in astrophysics as you are, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure. Space asteroid is... Uh... Captain, do you see that rogue asteroid floating in space? I can, yeah, I can. I'm not wearing my glasses. I don't like the way they make my, uh, my hair look, but yeah, I can see it, darling. Good. Uh, <laughs> as you get closer around the sort of um, equator of it, suddenly blinking lights flash up and they form a wave type pattern that point you towards the station of Y14 itself. It is a few of these large industrial, like, kind of hab blocks, um, this, like, modular style system that is just bolted to the surface of it. And suddenly, over the radio, uh, a transmission begins to play to you. Uh, hello there. Uh, 
Uh, this is Ypsilon 14, calling the Tempest. Ypsilon 14. <coughs> hello? Uh, te- uh, uh, the Tempest... Hello, it's the Tempest speaking. Who's that? Who may I ask is calling? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, one second. <laughs> my notes. Uh, hello. Uh, this is Ypsilon 14. This is Sonia. Um, Hi, babe. Hey, uh, hello. How, how are you doing? Yeah, I feel a bit rough, actually. I just woke up from my uh, my sleep. I've got a banging headache. But yeah, uh, all right. How uh, are you? Are you okay to be... Uh, docking? Yeah, it's all right, it's all right. I had a little pick-me-up. I'm all right, love. Yeah, how are you doing? Wait, you're not flying inebriated, <laughs> are you? No, 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 it's just a spritzer. A company policy dictates that uh, you cannot fly while under the influence of any kind of substance. Um, I, uh, this is this is quite quite troubling and upsetting, actually. It's just a joke, love, honey. It's just a joke. Oh, okay. I don't appreciate while well, on uh, airwaves during docking procedure. We should not be joking around oh, quite so much. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you're right. Sorry, love. Uh, if you'd like to proceed to Docking Bay 2, uh, we can commence uh, unloading, and I assume you have your delivery for us as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. All right, everyone, you heard that? Uh, yes, Captain. Doc- Docking Duh. procedure's already online. Wonderful. All right, we'll see you in a minute, hun. Okay, great. Uh, we'll happily see you then. Uh, transmission, out. Bye! Epsilon 14, out. <sighs> Well, she was quite rude, wasn't she? She's stuck up, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. It, was only, it was only a spritzer. It was like 4%. You Jeez. drive better when you've had a couple. Why is it really? <laughs> Helps me focus. Yeah. The last drink you had was two weeks ago. No, I just snuck one in in a bathroom. <laughs> yeah, just a little one. to It's uh, been a bit bit shaky from the mm. old uh, crime rate. Take the sleep. edge off. Yeah. I wondered what you, that smell was. Did you actually have a, have a drink? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, fine. No, <laughs> wow. no I was going to say, wow. uh, if you've had a drink, you can lose one stress. Oh, um, I mean, actually, I, yes, I did. I did. Uh, <laughs> I did have a, I did, so I did a white wine spritzer. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can have a little um, oh. Space Malibu or whatever you're, you're up to. But yeah, when she off. says she um, has had a drink, do I gain one stress? <laughs> <laughs> She's saying that to me, Space Space Warden, uh, not um, the crew, I'm guessing. Mm. Did you do that in secret? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do we would have a bit of secret drinking? Secret? Or would you just be openly drinking? I mean, I do have a beer fridge next to yeah. where I try. <laughs> I know she drinks. Yeah, I feel okay. like it wouldn't have been nice. a secret. Okay. I'm having, you know, those like pre mixed cans of Malibu you can right. get? I'm just oh, swigging nice. one of those. Yeah, yeah. You know? okay. Very good. The thing which, is, I'm used to this. Which, I, did, I didn't even disable the autopilot. She still thinks she's driving. Yeah. Oh <laughs> it's, all, it's all under manual. It's all automatic control. I, yeah. I want our spaceship, the like head beams, to have those big like fake eyelashes that sometimes oh, people okay. stick onto their cars. One hundred percent have those. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, you pull up towards uh, docking bay two, mm-hmm. and uh, give me some kind of piloting roll. Okay. Wait, isn't the autopilot on? No, so um, the reason that these ships have human crews is because things like docking and mm. uh, taking off landings, um, autopilots cannot handle that. They, they need uh, humans. Too to, many variables. It's too yeah, many yeah, variables yeah, yeah. for emergencies and things along those lines. Okay. Uh, I got 23. Great. Uh, absolutely smooth. Um, you know, you're with a, with a drink inside you. I can hear the sound effects of the landing happening. Far oh. better. <laughs> <laughs> what, watch where you're going! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you pull into uh, next to Docking Bay 2. And so you are basically uh, flying up next to this station, and a catwalk um, will extend from your airlock into theirs, uh, forming forming a seal that it's not actually you're not landing within mm. the complex itself you're basically floating along oh, is that why it's called docking because of the two things coming mm. together and going inside of each other that's exactly what yeah, it's yeah, called yeah. Docking. a very smooth landing carol oh thanks babe as always and don't uh, call me carol it makes me feel old sorry <laughs> call me kaz <laughs> okay oh, love it. Kaz. that sounds a bit more spacey as well <laughs> I, I, mis- I misspoke i apologize <laughs> Uh, it's been so two weeks on my own. <laughs> so on your manifest, um, you have got a a couple of crates that need to be taken in, mm-hmm. uh, like a just full of all odds and sods. Um, 
I'm sure someone's got a clipboard with exactly what packages mm. are going on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, you are successfully docked. Do you want to head okay. on? Can I put my exosuit on to carry the boxes? Because <clears throat> very oh. clever. Normal carrying, mm. boring. Uh, Robo carrying, way cooler. Okay, are you um, carrying your machine gun with you? No. Okay, sweet. Uh, yeah, with or maybe it's strapped to the back of it or something. I guess whatever. Well, you tell me. Yeah, it makes sense because it's it makes you like carry things stronger, so I wouldn't notice the extra weight. Sure. Presumably, you think so it'd be like a holster be, like, built into the mm. exosuit. However, how oh do you want yeah, it, it would have you... some kind of holster. Yeah, yeah, yeah tell that me, makes sense. What does your so you have this mm. suit of very powerful uh, sort of like a battle suit? Mm. Um, what does it look like? Give me a okay. <laughs> Oh, Space feel, feel free. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want it to be that like big and serious. I want it to be a bit more like you know, um, run down and like shank because everything in this universe is a little worn. Mm. And so I don't want it to be like slick and cool. Do you look um, like an old Cylon, a dirty old Cylon? Oh. <laughs> dirty old Cylon. Well, I don't have the red red lines zipping back and forth. You can have a helmet. Oh, uh, okay. You could have sure. that if you want to. Or do you want to be without helmet? Because that means that you're a main character and you're cooler, right? Yeah, if I've got a helmet, I'm just going to die off screen. Yeah. Like, like a chump. Okay, well, you, there's definitely an optional helmet. Maybe it's got like bike. a flip up thing and I leave it flipped up unless I need like the night vision or whatever. It's like uh, a hoodie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure. I want to hide snood. from the police. <laughs> <laughs> Space snood. Space snood. <laughs> okay, so great. Well, yeah, normally um, these big four crates uh, mm -hmm. that would take, yeah, like all of you kind of working together to, to manage or you need some equipment. Yeah, you can you can carry three of them by yourself mm -hmm. uh, just in a stack with the... Yeah, the, I just like rig them up with like a thing that connects them and just hoist it up in one go. Yeah, holy shit, you can definitely do that. Nice. Um, cool. Thank you, Corporal. And... Just tell me where you want them. Do you want to head through into Ypsilon 14 itself? Yes. Offloading who's, is complete. Who's going Our first? mission is finished. Choose party order. We must now proceed to the manifest delivery station to meet Mich Michiel Mal <laughs> Mike Michelson, who I know very well from previous missions. I will lead the way. Okay, you uh, head to the head into the airlock. Mm -hmm. uh, the doors hiss open, and then the doors to Ypsilon 14 themselves hiss. You're on board. Uh, you go into this main main kind of room, um, which is real large, maybe um, 20, 30 meters across, which is sort of half storage bay. Um, it's half being used for a bunch of other things. Uh, a few of the miners that are on the station, they're walking around in their heavy, heavy work boots clanging on the floor. Uh, this place stinks of sort of just garbage and body odor and like industrial cleaners. Um, it's kind of a bit... Industrial cleaner? Industrial mm. cleaning. A lovely aroma. Uh, <laughs> in the very center of of this room is this huge kind of like freight elevator that descends down into the mine itself. Um, you can see a guy uh, currently like working on it um, where he's got a bunch of tools out. One of the control panels is sort of half open. And he's just having a red hot go at fixing this up. Uh, one of the corners of this place has a whole load of kind of like cubbies where um, you can see that there's some vac suits um, mm. that are being stored there, some work boots, a bunch of tools and things like that. Space pickaxes. Space mm. picks, space drills, space shovel, mm. um, all the kind of stuff that you'd expect in uh, like a mine. Space mine. Mm. And uh, like one of the other corners is a bit of a makeshift kind of uh, like hospital setup. Um, like there is a a gurney with a real basic kind of like auto dock uh, type thing that would do very basic sort of uh, medical procedures. Mm -hmm. And this has like a vague curtain pulled around. You can see this thing has got like a bit of a blood splat on it. It's just <laughs> looks like it just isn't super well maintained mm. um, at all. And in the very center of this room is a like a, a big kind of command console that uh, you can see two women stood at and they are having an argument at the moment. Um, one of them, much shorter, she looks, you've seen corporate people before, she looks like a corporate person uh, wearing a bit of a suit, but almost kind of like making the point of wearing 
uh, kind of like a miner's uh, like jacket over the top. But this thing is pristine. It mm. has never seen uh, any hard work in its life. And she's also wearing a like a space hard hat <laughs> as well. Right. And she's arguing with this far larger woman. Uh, she's got a shaven head. She's wearing her just absolutely filthy mm. uh, overalls. Um, she can have a patch on her... Jacket. Uh, jacket. Mm -hmm. You got dice or uh, roll me a thing. A big patch on her jacket that says ninety six. Ninety six. That says I heart myself. <laughs> 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 oh, good for her. And uh, yeah, they are the the far larger woman is. She looks furious. Um, is really really angry mm. and is uh, I just need to kind of get get a voice for her. Mm. Well, well, something like this. <laughs> sure. Perfect. Uh, uh, yeah, so she is there and like really towering over um, the other person just, mm. look, we should have sent out a distress beacon before. We should have phoned this one in. I don't care about your company policy. He's one of my workers. We need to be doing this. Uh, and the, the corpo person is just saying, like, it is against procedure. We are not going to do that. We have guests. We will talk about this later. Otherwise, I am reporting you. And the, the large woman kind of storms off uh, through a large uh, like door off to the side of this place. Um, off this room, there is only one door outside of the elevator. And they go through there to what looks a bit like a crew quarters. And uh, the corporate person comes over to you and is like, hello, uh, so, I'm so, so sorry about that. Um, hello, um, I'm, I'm Sonia. Uh, I'm in charge of, uh, in charge of this, this station. Uh, welcome to Ypsilon 14. Um, I don't recognize all of you, but some I may have met before. How are you doing? Hello again, Sonia. How are the kids? Um, I don't have children. <laughs> My career comes first. <laughs> Thank you for asking. I'm it's a little too impersonal for my taste, especially for uh, property of the company. Um, do you have all of our uh, deliveries? Have they? Uh, uh, hi, Bab. Yeah, um, hello. Um, I'm Carol. Hey, uh, it's uh, lovely to meet you. Are you the captain? I'm the captain, yeah. Um, lovely to meet you, darling. Thank um, you. She begins writing something on her clipboard. Oh, what are you uh uh yeah it's... we've uh we've got your packages you asked for. Um my hunky mm. muscle man over here uh <laughs> he's got them all. Just tell me where you want me to stick it. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh um you can uh put it uh just put put it by here. Um it, well I'm surprised you brought it all over. We have two of our loaders. They were gonna come and carry Carry well, that, uh, saved you the trouble. And uh, you can see these two uh, two guys kind of like stood there waiting. Um, one is like a real big fella. One like a little bit smaller, who's kind of like looks a bit a bit nervous. And he's like, "Oh, oh, that's great. Oh, I thought we were gonna have to have to carry carry that stuff. Cool. So, I'll just stomp over and pop it onto whatever like hover yeah wheelbarrow they have. Yeah, they yeah their hover wheelbarrow. <laughs> um, as you get close, the big guy stinks like oh. he has not had a wash in god knows how long and they're like oh that's great thank you thank you very much and he just stares at you silently mm. um he must be like a head taller than you and you're not a small person i get into a staring contest <laughs> okay yeah oh i'll try and stare him down give me a i will roll against i think like just Fear. We'll fear off against each other. Ooh, okay. My guy's not actually that brave, but he tries to cover it up by being all butch and macho. Uh, ooh, I have rolled an 11, which is a critical success. Ooh, well, I rolled a 68, which <laughs> is a failure. Uh, this guy, like, stares at you, and there is, like, a quiet strength about him mm. that you know he could commit horrific acts of violence with his bare hands, and you have to look away. Uh, this guy instantly intimidates you. Hmm. Um, and uh, the guy with him 
is like, oh, guy, please, Kentaro, come, let's, we'll we'll take this stuff away. And he kind of tries to push him back as this guy mm. is sort of just looking at you, kind of just dead, dead-eyed. Mm. Um, the dude who's down kind of repairing the the elevator, uh, working on that, is like, whoa, food's here. <laughs> Do you bring the uh, Soylent Red? We've been out of that for weeks. <laughs> Come on, I want some krill. And uh, mm. he heads over, and uh, the the corpo uh, Sonia just looks very disapprovingly um, at just all of this. <laughs> uh, great. Um, we so, are hoping to get our manifest stamped, so we may proceed on to our next destination. Do you oh. know where Mikhail Mike Michelson is? Oh, Mike. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so. Um, we have a minor instant at the moment, but it should not be a problem. We're running a little bit behind as, uh, yeah, Mike has, uh, he has gone missing uh, for the last, um, it's not been quite 48 hours yet. That is company protocol is when we should call that in, but um, we are, we've not been able to find him and we've not been able to do a full search because we did not want to fall behind we need to make sure our delivery was ready to give to you. We've had people working overtime. Uh, some of the crew are still down in the mine itself. Uh, Where it, did he go missing? Is he in the down the mine somewhere? I mean, this this station isn't all that big. No, the station is not uh, very very large. Um, I'm sure he'll turn up. Uh, he's he's a man. He likes to drink, uh, which I do not approve of on company time. And, uh, yes, we have not been able to locate him, but we could not fall behind on our schedule. It is company mm -hmm. policy. Um, after 48 hours, we will begin a full full search, and so, we will report this in. Did you say the lift was broken? They were, like, repairing it. Oh, no, the lift is... Uh, oh, are you asking oh, me? Oh, sorry, yeah, that was out of character. <clears throat> you, see, uh, you saw a guy, like, working on the lift. Mm -hmm. um, worried they were all trapped down there. Uh, as you are, as you ask me that, mm. um, all of a sudden the lift bay uh, doors just open, and an elevator comes up. And as that happens, kind of the whole lights in this place just go out for a second and come back on. Um, the other people that are walking around, you see, they just do not even bat an eyelid to this. The you get the feeling that. This is an older, mm. uh, older module. Like these kind of um, uh, like modular buildings, they would stick them on asteroids, mm. pull them off, take them to another asteroid, and attach it to that. So this thing has probably been in service for 60, 70 years itself, mm. even if it hasn't been Blimey. here mm. uh, that whole time. Um, oh, uh, oh, don't uh, don't worry about that. Um, we've just got a few. Uh, the elevator's been playing up recently and uh, just going up and down by itself. Um, it's nothing to worry about. Um, the airlock has an absolute failsafe uh, down in the mine um, that is not pressurized at all. And so, uh, but it's it's okay. And well within safety regulations, uh, everything is mm -hmm. absolutely fine. I um, was trying to get Jerome to fix it up, but uh, he's gone off i'm sure there's some some kind of smut magazines in that delivery that you uh you ordered captain <laughs> we haven't we haven't received the stamp yet for handing it's, over it's all right Stephen. calm down we've got to wait a little bit it's, just calm down you know what these robots are like they're a little bit impatient oh yes i i'm so glad that we don't have one on this uh this ship they give me give me the creeps um, she says just happily in front of you. Just <laughs> what, a single tear. <laughs> oh. Sparks flying out of his face. <laughs> I'm used to it. It is understandable. Um, so I'm a bit starved of gossip after so long. What's happening with that big that big lady? What are you two fighting about? Oh, oh, um, uh, that's Dana. Um, don't mind her. She's in charge of uh, the the mining the mining crew, uh, the the drillers and. She's just insisting that we halt working right now and uh, go 
go and look for Mike. Um, but I think he's just just hiding somewhere. And uh, I do not want to break company protocol and we cannot fall behind on our quota. Um, so you are here to pick up a whole load of whatever has been dug in the last couple of months since yeah. the last um, uh, hauler came through. Uh, it wasn't you guys. Um, <clears throat> but uh, just so you know, you are waiting for a delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, you're waiting to right. pick stuff up as well. Um, we are already running uh, behind because uh, Mike has missed his uh, last last two shifts, and um, it's caused us heavy delays here. And so we're going to have to keep you a little while longer. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll show up. We tried texting him. Space texting you. Space text. I don't think we have phones. I don't think no. uh, you have mobile phones in this setting. You, I think like walkie talkies, a maybe, yeah. um, mm. that kind of thing, like a radio type thing. Uh, if you, while you wait, um, she sighs as like the lights flash again and just the elevator just goes down. Um, the, Does it keep stopping the elevator? It. It looks real, like, juddery and jerky, but just all by itself, the doors, uh, it begins to descend, the airlock doors close on it as it just descends straight down into the asteroid. Um, and she's like, oh, it's all completely safe. Do not worry. Do you want some help with that? I'm actually really good with mechanical repair stuff. Oh, you're more than uh, welcome to have a try. I'd maybe get Jerome to uh, help you um, as he he's our kind of fixer-upper sort of guy. Um, the rest of you, if you'd like to, uh, you're welcome to um, just wait in the, the mess hall. Um, we've got a uh, an auto chef that mm. can make you a very delicious burrito. Oh. <laughs> Doctor, I notice you're not still 100%. Shall we check out the local medical facilities to give you a scan? I want to make sure that you are not badly injured. Um, yes. Is mm. that okay to do? C can we make use of your medical facilities? Uh, we will have to charge that uh, to your ship. Um, but don't worry, I can handle that with the TCH Corp. Um, I can file that paperwork. Mm. Uh, feel free to go ahead. Oh, and, and of course, you're going to be charged for us having to wait here and wasting company time, right? Because <laughs> we are going to have to report that, of course. Ooh, I like this. Yeah, give me a... Uh, no, I think I need to make a, a roll. Hmm. Well, maybe we can look the other way on a minor... A minor delay. It, of course, it can't be our fault. It's Mike. Um, if anything, I'll write Mike up for this, for sure. him causing the delay. Yes. Uh, but uh, feel free to help yourself to... Uh, We're all reasonable. We all work for the same company, you know? You can see her, like, not happy about this at all. But <laughs> A little bit of give, a little bit of take, you know? Mm, well... It all no. evens out in the help, end and... Help yourself to the medical... The medical uh, Thank system. you so much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, Corporal, Dana looks mm. like the down-to-earth type. Perhaps you should engage her in conversation and find out what she knows about this missing mic. Hmm. All right. Good idea. I'll let that big, strong guy over there take the cargo over to our ship. Done him enough favours already. And where do you want to go? Do you want to go with um, <clears throat> Axel or do you want to... Well, or do you want to go and find... Do the um, I'm going with Jerome. Okay, so Jerome, uh, um, after the deliveries got taken through into the sort of the crew area, they uh, he he went that direction. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to head that sort of way, the same area that uh, Dana, Dana went to as well. Mm -hmm. And you guys going over to the Medi... Medi area. Are you coming with? Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, I will. Uh, I'll go with you guys first. Um, into. Mm -hmm. uh, so you head through um, this door, and it leads into sort of like a large crew block where there are a load of different um, rooms that come off of this, which are quite small, just like crew quarters, but one for every person here. There's mm -hmm. ten named sort of like uh, cubicles that different people can live in. Um, each one has the name of a person on it. Um, from here, you can also see two more doors that go off to a shower block and to the mess hall. Um, I think I actually can give you 
a little map, if that will help. Mm. Here you go. You can each have a map. I'll Ooh. assume that you uh, okay. just one for each side of the table. <laughs> oh, okay, wow, so it's like an ASCII art oh, map. I thought the quarters <laughs> were like open plan, but they're all like little cabins. Mm. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. you've gone from the main, um, mm -hmm. the main workstation mm -hmm. into this larger, larger area that has a whole load of uh, just like prefab, like rooms coming off of it. Leading from there, the washroom and the mess hall. Mm -hmm. um, you can see uh, the doors kind of juddering open and a load of the boxes that you delivered are already in the mess hall um, where you can see Jerome, um, this big, big smelly guy and the shorter dude who looked a bit nervous. Um, them beginning to unpackage this stuff and kind of like sort it away into there. Mm -hmm. um, there's no sign of uh, Dana immediately. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, it, does it look like, is there anyone who doesn't look busy that we can go talk to? Uh, there's the, you can only see those three guys that are off into the, um, in the mess. And all okay. the other, the doors around here, um, a bunch of them are shut, a few of them are ajar open. But they all have a, a sticky on the, the front of them with who mm. is in there. Okay. Uh, Dana's, Dana's uh, door is shut. I, I don't want to talk to that stinky guy again. I'm going to go uh, knock on some doors. Uh, all right, love. Um, I don't know why I've come through here, because I wanted to go to the elevator, and that's over there. But didn't you want to find uh, Jerome? Jerome, and Jerome. Jerome had gone through because he was right. excited about porn mags? Porn mags. Oh, yeah. he said? He and soil and bread. And soil and bread. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> that's it. Um. I didn't just make that up. <laughs> yeah. You can see him in there getting armfuls of Soylent Red together. Right. God, I thought you were going to say porn. <laughs> and and he's got a porn. porn mag in his hand as well. Uh, <laughs> he's leaving the mess hall, coming towards you guys, yeah. mm. beelining towards his bunk, a load of these uh, <laughs> Soylent Red krill bars. Okay. Oh, yeah, man, I love Soylent Red. It's my favourite. And I love porn. <laughs> I'm Jerome. Oh, Jerome. <laughs> oh, my God. Um... <coughs> Oh, oh, I, mm. Jerome isn't the smelly one. No, oh, who's wait? Who's the, the smelly? The big one? muscly guy. That the I big muscly guy. Got I don't think you we don't know got. the name of him yet. Mm. All right. Um, Yo, that guy. His name's Kantaro, and he stinks. <laughs> God, that guy needs a wash. Anyway, I'm off to eat food and <laughs> jerk off. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Jerome, yahoo! Hey, what's up? Hello, I'm Jerome. Hello, um. I just, I want to uh, have a go on the elevator and fix it so we can get out of here because I I just want to get this job done, get my get my, my money, honey, you know? Um, so do you want to come and just help me out for like five minutes? Oh, yeah, that thing's been playing up for, God, like the last week or so. Uh, man, you are welcome to have a look, but I just can't see anything wrong with it. Uh, well, do you mind if I just like, need to have a little look at it? Is that all right? You're welcome to have a go, but... I don't know what's wrong with it. Do you like Soylent Red? Uh, no, I'm on a diet, actually. Porn? I love porn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he gives you a porn mag. Thanks, honey. Uh, cool. Well, I mean, I actually do have in my collection Smut the Captain Ordered. Oh, so. okay, yeah. so on your yeah. <laughs> trinkets, you already have... That's just in your back pocket. <laughs> This dog-eared erotic novel. <laughs> okay, well he has you, two. <laughs> uh, like space. The captain ordered space porn. Part. No, yeah. this one's called uh, Black Holes and Bulges. Oh, uh, space. Oh, I love this one. Thank you. Uh, great. Um, uh, if you need anything else. I'm going to be in my bunk. All right, bye, honey. Nice Firefly reference. That's exactly what I was doing. Have you picked up on all of my <laughs> other sci-fi references? Have, yes. Okay, and he walks off uh, whistling a, a jaunty tune. Unbuckling his trousers. <laughs> Unbuckling his trousers <laughs> and opening uh, a big block of Soylent Red. Oh, what, what does it look like? Like, just red cheese? Imagine, yeah, just a big block of red, spongy, meaty kind of like a bit wetter than you'd mm. want it to look. It's like tofu, uh, but red. Yeah, red tofu Bright is red what tofu. I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah. Um, and he goes into his bunk and slams the door and... He's not going to eat that. 
It's going to fuck it. <laughs> He's not going to fuck it. He loves Soylent Red. It's all red and That's, spongy. He loves <laughs> Soylent Red. Oh, no. Okay. Wow. Well, that concludes uh, episode one of Mothership. Um, I did not expect that it was going to start this way. A massive thanks to all of the members who helped to support this channel. Uh, without you, we would not be able to be making any of this stuff. If you're interested in uh, helping helping to keep this going, uh, maybe consider becoming a member today, uh, where you'll be able to get access to a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff, and you can see a whole load of extra content. Until next time, everybody, goodbye. Goodbye.